Hey, welcome to Pixel World VR. And in this episode, we're gonna go on a journey of building my brand new virtual reality gaming PC. So if you ever wondered where to start building your new hot rod VR rig, well, first you're gonna need a lot of cash. And secondly, you're gonna need this video. So go get your wallet, come back, and I'll meet you right here. See you in a minute. Every setup needs a good desk, so we chose the Bill Bill Standing Desk on Amazon. It was on sale for $186, uh, which is normally $230 something. It's one of the cheaper standing desks you can find, but had the least horrible reviews that I could find. Uh, look at those two little grommet holes there for cable management. I'm going to use those for something else you'll see in the future. There is a cable management basket it comes with. It also comes with two hooks for your headphones or your purse, I don't know. A little bit of procrastination was going on here, but you can see the instructional video is still on my mind. Uh, Johnny Silverhand had to get me in line uh, and I, I got into shape real quick. At this point, the legs are on there. Um, this table holds up to 180 pounds. That's um, more than I can offer it short of sitting on it. Make sure you get that rod there in the right way. It's very important, the one that goes into the motor. Then I gotta put the other stuff underneath, like the basket for cable management and the control unit. But let's get, let's fast forward here through this wormhole. And here we go. It's completely built. The Pixel World VR workstation, ready for active duty. Let's see if it works here. Sounds very industrious. Wait a minute, what was that? Oh, sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so here we go. I think it looks good and it's gonna suit my setup well. So, look what came in the mail today. This is a Sony InZone M9. It's an HDR monitor, 27 inches, 144 hertz. It has 96 local dimming zones, which give you a deeper black. They can turn themselves off completely. If you turn the lights off, it'll look like the monitor is not there. Um, it gets bright as well, up to 600 nits. Um, this is a post add-on here, but I played cyberpunk with this thing and I looked up at the sun and it hurt my eyes. That's all I got to say. Uh, the Cooler Master Tempest is a better option, actually. but And it's equal price. But I got this for $500 refurbished. And of course, it's white. I got my monitor still in the box. And my monitor arm. My monitor arm is a situation. Oh, I'm very bad at phone recording. I just want to show you guys how many freaking pieces. This thing's like a jigsaw puzzle. Oh yeah, there's a big arm there, but geez, all the nuts and bolts and stuff. I mean, it's gonna be lucky if I don't procrastinate on this for like three days. Usually, it's uh, it's your mindset, though. If you just start, you realize that it's not what it looked like at all, and it's actually easy. So maybe I will try and just open it. <laughs> so here we have our AVLT single monitor arm desk mount. It holds from 13 to 43 inch monitors. It holds up to 33 pounds. I heard the Samsung Odyssey G9 might be a little bit too heavy for this one. That was $146 if I didn't mention that before. Um, it swivels in all directions. Look at that extension right there. Ooh la la. And um, as you can see there, I have it mounted in the grommet hole there. 
So I did put that to use and don't really need it for cable management as you know, the cables will plug directly in there. I'm just going to wait for that next one to come and we'll have double monitor setup going. Um, as you can see here, uh, this thing can get is very versatile. It's like we can push it down as low. It can actually touch the desk if you want. And then you can squish it so that it is um, horizontal with your desk and then push the monitor back so that it goes back as far against the wall as you could want it. See? So let's build this computer already. So um, we'll start with the motherboard, which is the central hub of everything. Um, you plug most of the computer parts into the motherboard and um, if even when you're plugging things into the back of the computer you are plugging them into the motherboard uh, this asus motherboard has a lga 1700 chipset which is compatible with intel 12th and 13th gen processors which are its latest offerings in the eternal war against amd and it takes ddr5 ram which is the latest model of RAM, runs up to frequencies of up to like 7600 um, megahertz. And I got some Corsair Vengeance. When you're putting them in, it only goes in one way. Make sure that you push it down hard enough to hear a good click. Boom. And also in retrospect, I have to point out that I installed these sticks wrong, so you can't put them in the wrong way, but you can still install them wrong. So uh, stay tuned, and we're going to address that a little bit later, but um, uh, hold off on your installation for the present moment. So let's install this processor, which is like the brain of the computer. The 13th gen Intel processors, it's Intel's latest offering. I got the 13600K, which is an i5, which is actually the lowest level out of the three. There's the chip itself. That was the bottom of it. Um, let's see here. There's a little, uh, when you're installing these processors, there's a little triangle. I hope you can see it there in the video. And what you want to do is you want to match up that triangle with the one on that's going to be on the chip. You can see that there. That's how you know that you're putting it in the right way. And you kind of just lay it on top of the, the chipset there. And it doesn't really fit into any grooves or anything. You just lay it there and then you squish it down with this uh, lever mechanism here and make sure it gets under that clamp and you are good to go. Uh, 5.1 gigahertz and up to 20 threads in this one. I should be fine for my gaming. Hard drives. Um, so guys, if you don't know what a hard drive is, uh, and for all those that do, <laughs> please forgive me, but the hard drive holds your data in a solid way. I mean, you can turn on your computer and everything will be there provided your hard drive is working when you save this is where your information goes this is where windows lives um so hard drives have, are very fast nowadays i have a generation 4 m.2 ssd you will see the ssd slot uh presently here when i remove this cover um and it transfers about 7,000 megabytes per second. And when you're installing your hard drive in there, you'll see that it has a ridge or a groove. There's really only one way, so don't push too hard if it's not going. And, uh, or you'll, you're will you gonna spend a lot more money than you just did. Um, and there's this is a generation four. Generation three does about 3,000 megabytes per second. So it's almost 3,500, it's almost double the speed. But I'll tell you, a generation three will be so fast that you will never notice any lag in your data transfer. 
So why did I get this super fast one? Uh, to show off. So anyway, um, you could see there was a thermal pad there under that with a plastic sticker on it. Make sure you don't miss that when you're installing your M.2 Generation 4 SSD. And I took that sticker off. I don't know if I needed to. That one might be heat conductive. It might be fine on there. But um, anyway, you can see I'm cleaning the residue from the sticker here with alcohol pad, which is good for cleaning things in the computer because it evaporates really fast. Just don't pour the bottle in there. And so we're sticking everything back on. And that is our main hard drive, one terabyte, which was unheard of back in my day. And get the other screw back in here. And that should be all you need to do for your hard drive needs. So every motherboard needs a home. And boy, did we get a home for this one. We got a Lee and Lee Landcool 3 case. Lee and Lee has been making cases for decades. They're like the Rolls Royce or the Bentleys of, of PC case manufacturers. And yeah, other people might try to do it better, but they're never going to have the prestige of Lee and Lee. So if you're doing your build watching this video, get a Lee and Lee case or just unsubscribe. I don't want to hear it. Uh, I'm just joking, guys. Let's talk about what we're doing here. Um, when you're laying the motherboard in the case, you will see these standoffs that have holes at the top where you can thread screws through, line them up with the holes in your motherboard. And um, if things don't seem to be lining up, make sure all the connectors from the motherboard are sticking out of the back of the case and just start screwing away. It'll work out. So um, things were a little bit fun up until this point. See this big bad mamma jamma is the Noctua heat sink and um, they're well known for their cooling solutions for your processor that's where this thing is gonna sit this big mean hunk of metal and what you're looking at there is what's on the bottom of it is thermal paste I didn't know that it came pre-applied as you can see I was sticking it on things and leaving marks all over the place but anyway, what we got here is the back of the mounting bracket for the Noctua heatsink. It's a big heatsink, so it needs a good solution to hold it in place. That screw right there I'm showing you is one of many screws I had in the box. I did not know which screw to use, and I don't feel like I was able to find that info anywhere. I just had to figure it out. So then that screw is going to be at the back and then these two, this standoff and that screw, they're going to be on the front of your motherboard um, holding the other part of the bracket in, which you can see right there. That silver metal thing is another part of the bracket that goes on front. So now I've got to do that four times and here's what it looks like. As you can see, I also applied a little more thermal paste because I was uh, smudging the the pre-applied thermal paste all over the place. Had to clean that up with some hyperbolic al alcohol, like I was telling you before. So let's put this thing on here. And I love those little spikes on there. It's gonna come into play later as I describe the theme for my, for my new PC. So here we go. Boom, it's on. And there's only one fan right now, but I have another fan. Because uh, the it's an option. It only comes with one. I bought another one to increase my cooling efficiency. Well, let's talk about the RAM here. You you remember that I probably installed it wrong earlier. Well, you see those things, those slots there have different colors. You want to install them to the ones with the same color and usually the same number. That allows them to run in dual channel, which takes advantage of a larger bandwidth. The performance gain is minimal, but best to do it the right way.
So that crack you just heard was the monitor power cord being forcefully jerked out of the power socket, basically destroying it, putting little pieces of plastic on my desk. I guess I wasn't too aware of the mechanics with the cable managed power cords running through a mounting arm that they can get tight and they can get stuck. I thought I had a problem with my arm and that it stopped uh, functioning or moving for me. And so my initial response was just to jerk harder on it. So, well, I've uh, since then come to terms with this being broken. I have it with a person that could maybe fix it. And he's my best chance at fixing it. But they can't find the part. That one little part. That's all they need. So I'm not sure what the end is going to be of this story. All I know is I loved my M9. And I hope one day that it'll return to me.